So today I'm going to show you how to uh, string a Caracal Core Shadow 155, same as the um, slightly heavier model as well. Um, this follows a very similar pattern to what you'd have with a Prince powering. Uh, as you can see with this racket, you've got the, uh, the, the ring here, um, which is basically um, where the strings will go through. One side you'll go under and over, which you're going to do on this side. The other side you'll go over and under, which I'll do on this side. Important that you alternate um, on, on the string, so you get half going one way, half the other, um, because what you want to have at the end is a hard weave going through on the final cross, which you have. Um, some fairly intricate bits with the head of this racket as well. I'm going to do this as a two-piece. The reason why I'm doing it as a two-piece is because if you do it as a one-piece, then you get left with some very, very long loops around one side, um, on one side only, which means that you get an imbalance. So you should always really do a powering racket uh, like this um, with a two piece. It just means that by stringing the mains on their own and then stringing the crosses independently, you get a much more even tension spread. Otherwise, what will happen is that the tension will just go all over the place over time. Um, so let's, uh, show you first of all how we're going to do this so for the mains I'm going to measure out the string first of all and for this one I always measure out 15 and a half head lengths of string so here we go so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen and a half maybe a little bit more so I'm just going to cut off that string, which I need. You'll probably hear the rain in the background. Apologies, I can't do much about the rain, unfortunately. Um, so that's basically the mains covered. Um, so we've cut out the main. I'm just going to feed through. The mains on this racket are really, really quick to do. Very, very quick to do. Uh, indeed, reason being is because you're only pulling at the head of this racket. Um, rather than head and the throat. So I'm just making sure that I've got an even amount of string on both sides. And I'm going to separate this side here. And I'm actually going to clamp straight away to start with. Now what you can do if you want to is you can pull string on both sides and pull some tension i'm not because it's just as easy um and probably a little bit more accurate actually on this one to go just crack on with this and just make sure you hold that clamp up as you're pulling um so i'm going to go over and under for this side remember so we've got to go over and under on, on this side and then under and over on the other side just make sure that you Get the string nice and central, a little bit off to, to the side. Get it running in tension now. I'm doing this at 30 pounds just to pull tension. Leave it in there a little bit longer. So the string which I'm using is the Caracal Hot Zone Braided 127. So it's a 1.27 gauge string. So a little bit thicker than the 1.20 model I do. So this is good for uh, racquetball rackets. Um, it is also... So I'm just getting the string tangled up. Um, it is also slightly textured as well. So especially when you're pulling the cross strings through, you really will feel, um, you really will feel it. So it's quite easy, especially on the first few, it's quite easy to tangle the string up if you don't pay attention. Oops. As I say straight away. So what you should see is that string going under and this string going over. Make sure you don't cross over any of the strings at the throat of the racket as well. Again, because it's a fairly elastic string, this I'm just leaving it in a little bit longer. Um, what I'll be doing is going two ahead on each side and then switching over to the other side. So you want to keep the tension evenly balanced on this rather than doing one one side then another side but if any of you have seen my videos you'll you'll know 
but that's best practice anyway. So now I'll switch back to the other side because I've gone two ahead on there. And so whereas this side was under and over, this side just remember to go over and under rather than under and over. So just a really important point. And you can tell because you can see how the strings are staggered. So what you should find is that the final main on this side goes over the top of the bridge and the final one on this one goes under the, under the bridge. So without really rushing, you can see just how quick this can be done. So it's really hammering it down now with the rain. Um, so luckily I'm indoors. So on this racket, on the core shadow, what you'll find is you've actually got some grooves here, which are set aside about a centimetre either side of where the main ring bit is there. It just keeps these last mains out wide. Add a bit more tension, so I'm just adding 10% onto this, because you'll lose a little bit of tension on that final main as you do the tie off. There, get the last one in place. Just in to get that extra tension going. Sorry for the camera wobble. All right, so I've clamped those off. Um, what we're going to do now start on this side first of all so just remember if you've got posts on your machine just remember to take it through the loop on the post as opposed to on the outside now where this racket differs from a prince powering squash racket is that normally the de facto string to, to go to would be this one here to tie off against this would be the kind of anchor to tie off against however that's actually a shared grommet for one of the cross strings so you do need to come up to this one here it's not ideal because it does leave a bit of a longer uh, loop of string on the outside than would be ideal really um, but it's kind of what you have to do there are various ways so for example you can string the outside string and then this string uh, these strings are afterwards so the loop is a little bit smaller but it's not significant enough to break the, break the traditional pattern with, with doing this in my opinion and then it also means that you've got a few extra loops when doing the crosses as well. So best to stick to the simple plan. And yes, there are other ways in which you can do it. Um, but this is by far probably the, the, the least fiddly. So what I'm doing now, I'm just go back a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. So pull the string through here. And I'm going to do trusty Parnell knot. Just Get that ready there. Use my clamp. Pull it down. Fairly robust tug, not massive tug, because you don't want to break the string or damage the string when you're doing it. Let's see that's nice and tight still on the outside. I'll do the same on the other side. So remembering to get the right tire hole. So you want one which isn't going to be impacted by the cross spring. the string off there and on here and we go we've got the mains all perfectly installed so the last main on this side is under is lower this one is higher um, what I'm going to show next is how to string uh, the cross strings and it's quite intricate so I'm going to do some sideways views to start with 
just so you can see the outside of the frame because you need to be using the awl, the final awl, just to gently push down. Uh, and also uh, a clamp as well, a starting clamp as well, just to hold that top string there. So now I'm going to show how to get the uh, cross strings done on this racket. So as we can see, uh, what I've done on this side of the racket is I've gone over the loop and then under. And then on this side, I've gone under and then over. So what I want to do is finish with a hard weave at the throat of the racket, which means I'm putting pressure down on that string and pulling up on that string and vice versa on here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just show a few of the more intricate bits now uh, with this. So first of all, I need to work out where my hard weave, how to do the hard weave. So by that, I'm going to be going over the first string. So go through the first cross, which you'll see in the main video. And what I want to do is I'm going to use a clamp such as that and a pad. And I'm going to just get that clamped off on that side and then pull tension. So I don't need to do anything with the starting clamp just yet. But this is one of the more intricate bits here. So in order to get through to the next cross, you see there's two strings down here. So I need to use my final just to open up a bit of a gap next to that hole. So I'm being really careful with this not to damage the strings. So you can see I'm kind of going sideways and pushing down. So if you go in that way, then you could damage the strings. So it's going that way. And I'm actually going to pull the string all the way through here. Trying to, reason for it is to try and create less friction. So do it slowly, just taking some of that pressure off the string going through. So then I can start the weave coming through and I'll be adopting a similar, similar thing when I pull the cross string through the next side um, to do that. But that's just an example of how we make it nice and tidy on there. And just remember, it's all about cutting down on the friction. Okay, so now we've got the first cross in. As you can see now, I've got the starting clamp there with enough string left so I can pull tension on that at the end. So after I've strung two or three of these strings, I'm gonna come back to this one and then tighten off. Um, but the reason why I do this, as opposed to using uh, a normal starting knot, is just it, it makes it a little bit cleaner and you can get the accuracy a little bit better this way as well without cutting into the grommets too much. Um, so I've done the first cross and that was on a hard weave across there. So that was with pressure against the string. Um, with this one now, so the next one, little trick is exactly the same as the Prince Power Rings. If you go down to the throat, feed the string under to the right amount. So I'm not going under all of them, just to the right amounts here. And as I showed you before, with the um, with getting the first, the second cross through the hole, through the second grommet on the cross there, you need to separate the uh, the mains which have loops on the outside. So again, just using the final, I'm going sideways down on the string bed, keeping some of that pressure on, just pulling the string through nice and slowly. You will hear a bit of noise, and that's just because this is quite this is a bit of a textured string. But because I'm using two hands, I can't necessarily fan the string up too much, um, and it's difficult with this pattern anyway. So I'm just going a little bit slower than I normally would do. So I pulled that string right the way through, and now we can get to the stage where we're stringing uh, one ahead. With everything as you've seen with the close-ups of uh, the outside of the, the frame when I was showing you how to separate the strings to get the first cross through, or second cross through rather, um, it's really, really important that you keep an eye on the outside, make sure you're not crossing any loops over. So after every string you put through, just but now have a quick look 
make sure everything's all lined up and all flush. And again, I'm being pretty careful not, not to rushed with, with doing this. It won't take long anyway. Um, but the string is textured. So this is the uh, hot zone braid of 1.27, which can be used for squash or it can be used for racquetball. Um, but this is the thicker version, so it's good for racquetball. It gives a nice bit of bite on it, but when you're pulling it through, it does make a bit of a noise. It does great. So just be prepared for a bit of noise. So again, using that trusty awl, again, I'm going to be using that just to pull the string aside a little bit, just to give myself a bit of extra access. And again, on this side, I can still go underneath that string on the outside. So what you lose in time when you're going against the hard weave, you make up for on the other side because there's very, very little resistance. So you can see I'm now stringing comfortably one ahead. I'll tension the string now before tensioning the other one. And I'm also pulling enough string through so I can just about tension it. But so I'm not having to pull too much through on the next string afterwards because again, braided string, a little bit of uh, texture to it. You want to be really careful not to damage the, the main strings and the cross strings when you're coming through here. And again, I, I on this racket, what I do is I always, um, with a cross string, make the loops over the main strings on the outside of the frame here. So you stick, stick to over or stick to under. That way it just makes everything neater. Again, being nice and gentle down here. Again, you need to, what well, I tend to do on this cross because it's a little bit guarded by the by the post here. So I just pull this through. Use the old just to open up the gap a little bit. That just gives me a bit easier access. Oops. Again, just, you can probably see my head going down there. I'm just making sure that the, um, just making sure that the string is going over the top of the main loop, which I've got. So as you can see here, I'm getting a little bit of resistance, so just going to pull that through now, like that. It's not quite like string a regular tennis or squash or badminton racket, this, this racket, because you have got uh, the powering, so it's quite a pronounced difference between the bottom strings and the top strings. So the hard weave on this racket is a lot more pronounced, so you just have to be a little bit more patient. But this is me doing, doing things fairly slowly, just as a video demo. Again, just making sure I've got no crossover here. So what I'm going to show you in a second is just a little technique that you can use with any racket. If you think you're going to get a string that crosses over, on the outside. Um, I think there's going to be a crossover on here so I'm going to use my again my trusty final just to separate the string a little bit so I'm just putting it in the middle. Pull some tension and because I've put the all in the gap in between the two strings there it's kept them separated so they're running nice and linear to each other. Although crossovers don't necessarily make loads of difference to, to how it's going to play, 
if you get enough of them on a frame it will make a difference but it just looks poor it just doesn't look very good and you know somebody's getting a service from you if they're paying you money you want them to feel good about passing money over to you rather than having a racket that looks like it's been done by somebody on the back on the back streets Yeah, this, this frame is all about reducing friction. Interesting to see how many times I've mentioned friction in this conversation, actually. Probably a lot. Um, that won't be too long now. So these rackets, I've actually had about 50 of these rackets to string in the last week and a half, two weeks from Caracal. Uh, there's some special um, custom string versions which they've done for the, for the shadow. And some of my viewers will note I like to watch films and sometimes listen to some music when I'm stringing. Actually, I've, um, if you go onto G GRSA International on Spotify, I've got a playlist of songs on there with a mix of Jimi Hendrix through to a few other bits and pieces like Snoop Dogg on there. Um, but anyway, that's by the by. So, pure coincidence, uh, a lot of these rackets I've strung whilst watching the Batman trilogy, uh, the, the Nolan uh, one with Christian Bell in it. Uh, really, really good series. Uh, and it's just fu funny how I thought of this with having the Caracal Shadow Racket. Because this is a pretty mean thing. I think if Batman played racquetball, hey, maybe he'd be using this racket. Not sure I'd want to play against the Joker though. So as you can see, I'm actually weaving this way on the hard weave on this now, just because it's getting a little bit close. And it's probably the safest way to do that particular weave. Another thing which you might be noticing on here, apart from the amount of times I say friction, is that I'm straightening the strings up as much as I can as I'm pulling, th pulling through. I mean, you know, I mentioned this in probably most of my videos, if not all, but straightening the strings up whilst you're stringing the racket is incredibly important. And the reason why it's incredibly important is because if you've got strings that are looped around like a happy face or sad face, depending on which way you look at it, what that means is that you've lost a ton of tension going through because that hasn't pulled them completely straight. So straightening them afterwards when got massive loops down there isn't a particularly good idea so always try and straighten them as much as possible while you're stringing because naturally the next string that you come down on this again is one of the reasons why we string one ahead uh, naturally the next string that you string down on will start to pull them down so you see there how easy it is uh, to do it whereas it's not easy to pull them back um, this is where I stopped stringing one ahead and get the reason for this is again that down of friction. So just need to separate that a little bit. Don't worry about that. Um, the reason why I need to do it this way is I'm going to pull the string all the way through because otherwise what you have is you get the string woven through on the hard weave and then you have to pull it really hard at the end and that just burns the string out completely. So that this is the way in which I find it most easy to do it and again after every three or four strings that I'm coming through I'm pulling that string so I'm just minimizing the tension as the uh, friction as much as possible there you go friction mentioned again be interesting just anybody watching this watch it again if you can bear, bear to do that note down how many times I'll say friction the winner can get a free restring off me the next time they see me. A free restring. 
that's not everything really strong. So again, you can see how much, just how difficult it is to keep that string straight because it's really being held in on the hard brief side. Again, doing all these crosses, demonstrating it and going slowly. It's only going to take me probably 13, 14 minutes or so. And I'll do the mains in four or five minutes at the most, probably. So you're still looking at, even with demoing, it's only a 20 minute racket to string if you know what you're doing. And this bit here is mega tight. So again, just doing that. And it's, it's nigh and impossible to fan the strings out to reduce tension now because there's such a gap difference here. So it's really important that every sort of two or three that you weave, you pull that string through. Because trust me, it's really, really tight. Okay, it's all about preserving that string. All it takes is for one bad notch and it could just go straight through the string. And the play, you don't want that to happen prematurely. So as you can see, that's my a most definite hard weave. That string's there now. Just using my hands, I'm just gonna pull that a little bit. You can see it's really difficult to get these strings down. So I'm just gonna add an extra 10% tension as I pull the tension on my machine. And just jam my fingers in there just to get that final one pretty straight as I go through. Okay, clamping near the frame on there. Just make sure there's a bit of tightness in the frame. Cut this bit off. And then I'm going to do the tie off as ever. Trusty Parnell knot. By far the neatest knot on the market. Help if I didn't have the post in my way. I should use my fingers to do that. Normally I use the starting clamp, but see the starting clamp's up there at the moment. So I'm just going to keep that tight as I release the clamp. Releasing the actual clamp before the base. And now I'm safe. I'll get these up the right way. Just trim it off. And again, I use about a quarter to a half centimetre tails keep it nice and neat so now we've got the top main to do so again see a little bit of extra tension on there because you're going to lose some when you clamp it it's about as close to the frame as we can safely get without damaging anything this way what we should have is a racket that's got nice tight cross strings um, on the top and at the throat as well nothing worse than picking up a racket that's got flimsy loose cross strings on the top and the bottom so again part on that on that And neat, cut that tail off. I oh, gotta straighten these strings. I'm gonna do it slowly because I've got my camera actually mounted onto the string machine here, so it really feels every single wobble. So I don't need to do a lot with these strings because uh, they're, they're pretty straight already. Um, but always best to straighten the strings as soon as you strung a racket. Just looks better and it stops them from notching up really badly because once they notch up that's where the strings are going to sit naturally uh, and again straighten the main strings which are a little bit more awkward on this because the strings go in a fan pattern so 
so it's not quite so obvious when they're straight or not. This is where it's quite good to have a degree in geometry. Is that right? I think geometry is the right term, isn't it? Ge geology is to do with uh, archaeology and rocks and the earth, study of the earth. So yeah, I think geometry is about right. So there we go. There's a relatively quickly strung cross section on this racket.